Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. On the 1st of April 2023, I signed up to the Octopus Flux Tariff and in this video I'm going to go through my first three months of actual data to see whether early indications suggest it was worth it. I'll cover how much money we made through export payments, how false discharging the battery went and whether we'll continue doing this, how my spreadsheet predicted values lived up to my actual data and finish off with some final thoughts on Flux. If you're completely new to Octopus Flux, I suggest you check out my previous video introducing Flux and what you need to do to sign up. I'll drop a link to this and my tariff spreadsheet calculator which you can download and use in the video description box below. It's taken a bit longer to get this video out as we've had a little addition to the family, everyone meet Oscar. Okay, so I haven't got long before he wakes up again, so let's crack on with the video. Just a quick recap for context, we have a total of 8.31 kilowatt potential split over two separate arrays an 8.2 kWh battery with an AC coupled inverter and a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which we can charge both partially during the day and to 100% off-peak. On Octopus Flux, I scheduled the home battery to charge to 100% during the cheap off-peak period between 2 and 5 a.m. The reason for this is to keep the battery topped up and allow as much solar to be exported during the day at a higher rate than I'm importing it at. I could try and estimate how much energy I would need to keep me going overnight and just charge the battery via solar each day. But charging the battery to full off peak is a lot simpler than checking weather forecasts and occasionally getting it wrong, and then worrying about running out of battery power during the expensive 4 to 7 pm period. April was a bit of a hit and miss month with some really clear sunny days and a few overcast wet days, where we produced very little solar. In total, we generated 725 kilowatt hours of solar in April with generation averaging 24 kilowatt hours and ranging from 3 to 48 kilowatt hours per day. Further breaking that down, we self-consumed around 255 kilowatt hours of solar directly to the house and approximately 57 kilowatt hours into the battery. So in total, around 35% of April's generation, we self-consumed into the house and adding solar to battery, we increased that figure up to 43%. This self-consumption figure is quite high and I think comes as a result of still being in that mindset that I need to try and consume most of what we're generating. Furthermore, our Flux export didn't show up for 48 to 72 hours on our online account, compared to the Flux import which showed straight away. So I definitely wanted to make sure we weren't losing export for nothing. But Octopus held true, export showed on my account and payments were backdated to the 1st of April, our original tariff switch date. But what about that all important export? Of that total generation in April, we exported 381 kilowatt hours at the day export rate of 20.92p per kilowatt hour and 91.6 kilowatt hours at the 4 to 7 pm export rate of 33.69p per kilowatt hour. A total of 472.6 kilowatt hours export or 65.2% of our total generation. Oh, and just in case anyone thinks I've forgotten it, we exported absolutely nothing at the overnight export rate of 8.15p per kilowatt hour. I still don't quite know why that rate exists, and if anyone is exporting at that time, then please do let me know how it's going for you, and in which instance it may be worth it. I'm genuinely interested. In April, I never forced this charge to battery during the peak export hours due to concerns over the battery's health and life cycles. Instead, in order to maximise our export during the 4 to 7pm period, we would use as little as we could during the time. A bit like being on Agile again. So, in April we received a total export payment of £110.57. Into May and things were looking much more consistent. In total we generated 1,019 kilowatt hours of solar in May, averaging 33 kilowatt hours per day, with a range of 8 to 51 kilowatt hours. Further breaking that down, we self-consumed around 283 kilowatt hours of solar directly to the house, and approximately 40 kilowatt hours into the battery. So in total, around 28% of May's generation, we self-consumed into the house, and adding solar to battery, we increased that figure to 32%. We exported 498 kilowatt hours at the day export rate of 20.92p per kilowatt hour, and 201 kilowatt hours at the 4 to 7 pm export rate of 33.69p per kilowatt hour. A total of 699 kilowatt hours export, or 68.6% of our total generation. As I mentioned in the month of April, I never forced discharge the battery during the peak export hours due to concerns over the battery's health and life cycles. However, with the longer sunnier days and therefore better generation, I started to get FOMO. 
In fact, I set up a poll on this excellent solar and battery Facebook group, and the results were pretty interesting. Of the 203 people that voted on the poll, 90 suggested they force discharge their battery, with half of these outlining that they made sure they left enough in the battery to get through to the off-peak period at 2am. 93 suggested they weren't bothered about force discharging or were actively not doing this due to concerns over the battery's health. The remaining 20 people either don't have a system which supports force discharging the battery to the grid or they just weren't sure what flux was. Okay, pretty much a 50-50 split between the force discharging and not force discharging camp. I'm up for trying most things once, so for the last few days of May I decided to try it out. I didn't want to run out of battery with diminishing solar in the 4-7pm period, and have to then draw from the grid at the peak rate of 44.69p per kilowatt hour. So my understanding is that you can't automate this in the Give Energy app yet, so what I did was set two alarms, the first at 4pm, and assuming that the battery was sitting at around 100%, I would start to manually discharge it back to the grid. The second alarm would be set for around 6pm, where I'd usually stop the battery discharging typically when I was down to around 30-40%. to 40%. In those last few days of May, we managed to discharge an average of 4.7 kilowatt hours per day back to the grid from the battery, between 4 and 7pm. In May, we received a total export payment of £171.94. Into June and a heatwave, making our panels a bit dusty, but still generating well and regularly hitting over 45 to 50 kilowatt hours generation per day. In total, we generated 1,062 kilowatt hours of solar in June, averaging 35 kilowatt hours per day with a range of 10 to 52 kilowatt hours. Further breaking that down, we self-consumed around 270 kilowatt hours of solar directly to the house and approximately 53 kilowatt hours into the battery. So in total, around 25% of June's generation, we self-consumed into the house, and adding solar to battery, we increased that figure up to 30%. As I mentioned in the month of May, we started to explore force discharging. This again continued to work well in June, apart from a few days when it was quite overcast and we were generating little solar. I'd also on a couple of these days started discharging the battery at 4pm but then forgot to check back or dismiss my alarm, only to see that the remaining battery had dipped below 20%, and unfortunately not enough to see us till the 2am off-peak period on flux. Oops. However, for the most part, it worked out okay, and in June we managed to force discharge a total of 161.5 kilowatt hours at an average of 5.4 kilowatt hours per day from the battery to the grid between 4 and 7pm. We exported 574.4 kilowatt hours at the day export rate of 20.92 p per kilowatt hour and 301 kilowatt hours at the 4 to 7 pm export rate of 33.69 p per kilowatt hour. A total of 875.5 kilowatt hours export, or 82.4% of our total generation. In June, we received a total export payment of £221.61. Okay, so remember in my solar and battery tariff calculator video I released in March 2023, I aimed to estimate our quarterly export payments based on our system's generation potential, self-consumption, and average export payment per kilowatt hour. Now that I have some actual data, I'm going to see how close I was. I'm genuinely quite nervous about this, so I've asked an independent adjudicator to give us the numbers. Before I do that though, if you're thinking of joining Octopus Energy, then don't forget our offer of an extra £20 from us on top of the £50 credit you get from Octopus Energy when you sign up via the link in the video description box below, or clicking by this text here in the spreadsheet. The channel will get the remaining £30 and this will go towards continuing to bring you more content for free. And please remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, so you're the first to know about new content just like this on the channel. Okay, thanks for having me on. So starting with your quarterly generation prediction for Q2, April till June, the spreadsheet predicted you'd generate 31.49 kilowatt hours per day, and your actual data suggested a generation of 30.66 kilowatt hours. And next, you suggested a self-consumption figure, that solar to home, of 25%. Your actual self-consumption figure was 30%. Ah, that self-consumption figure is actually quite a bit out, and I know why that is. This little man has meant more loads of washing, plus my wife is on maternity leave and therefore has been charging the plug-in hybrid during the day, so we have enough charge to collect the kids and get to after-school activities. How about the average price per kilowatt hour export payment achieved? Okay, so you suggested an average of 0.24p per kilowatt hour. 
you've achieved an average export figure of 0.243p per kilowatt hour. Wow, that's great, and should help me with forecasting my numbers for future years. OK, last but not least, my total quarterly export payment. Hit me with it. So you predicted your quarterly export payment for solar generation to the grid, so not including forced battery discharge to the grid, between April till June 2023, would be 510 and 15 pence. Your actual export payment from solar generation only is 443 pounds and 37 pence. Including your forced battery discharge to the grid, your actual export payment was 504 pounds and 12 pence. Ah, around 14% out. I suspect that's due to our increased self-consumption figure in Q2. And if I change that up to 30%, which is what my actual data suggests, we get an estimated Q2 export payment figure closer to the actual export payment figure we achieved. And it just goes to show how important that estimated self-consumption figure is. Just as a side note, I found the spreadsheet useful for recording my quarterly savings, a figure which is otherwise quite difficult to calculate, based on my actual solar generation and self-consumption data that we've been discussing. I plan to record this figure alongside my export payments in a cumulative spreadsheet to keep an eye on my payback progress. OK, so what are my final thoughts on Octopus Flux? Flux is a brilliant tariff so long as your export outweighs your import consumption. At the very least, you should be aiming to draw from the grid during the off-peak rate only. For those with an EV, this may be more of a challenge. However, if you're driving a reasonably low number of miles per week, it should still work out well for you given these lucrative export payments. But you'll need to tailor it for yourself and run your own numbers in the calculator, which you can still download via the video description box below. What about force discharging the battery consistently over the month of June? How did I find that? In total, we discharged exclusively from the battery to the grid 161.5 kilowatt hours between 4 and 7 p.m. So 161.5 kilowatt hours times 33.69p, the export peak rate per kilowatt hour between 4 to 7 p.m., equals 54 pounds and 41 pence. Then I need to factor in recharging the battery overnight during the off-peak rate. So 161.5 kilowatt hours times 19.12p, the import off-peak rate between 2 and 5 a.m equals 30 pounds and 88 pence. So our final profit is 54 pounds 41 pence minus 30 pounds and 88 pence equals 23 pounds and 53 pence. As I mentioned at the beginning and in my previous video, I wasn't particularly bothered about force discharging the battery due to concerns about the battery health. It was FOMO that made me try it out. I also found it quite cumbersome having to set an alarm to start discharging the battery and then periodically check on it. I know some of you clever clogs out there have managed to automate this with the likes of Home Assistant, but this isn't a rabbit hole I've gone down yet. However, moving forwards, I've decided to not continue to force discharge the battery due to the faff of manually initiating and stopping the discharge, my nagging concerns over battery degradation, and the relatively low financial gains to be had from doing so. Plus, when we bought the battery, I reassured my good wife that it would make things easier, less complicated and a bit more chill. So the prospect of telling her that I've actually run out the battery so she can't put that appliance on until later, well, let's just say it wouldn't be good. If you're wondering why I'm now in different clothes, whilst in the process of editing this video, the ever-thinking bods at Octopus NG have come up with a smarter version of Flux, called Intelligent Octopus Flux. There aren't many details out about it yet, but what I understand so far is that the tariff pairs with your battery to optimise the charging and discharging, saving you money and helping balance the grid. So, essentially it sounds like they'll be controlling your battery. Import rates are suggested to be lower than they are on standard Flux, and they'll discharge the battery back to the grid when export rates are best without any intervention from yourself. So far it sounds like you're only able to sign up with Give Energy batteries, although you can register your interest for other battery makes as well. I'm not sure how I feel about me not being the one to control the import and export times and what happens if it drains my battery and leaves me importing at a higher rate. Either way, I've joined the waiting list and I'm sure more details and FAQs will emerge before committing. And I'm sure I'll cover these in a video in the near future. I'll be looking to post an update of how the rest of the summer went in about three months time and go through my thoughts on which tariff to switch to for the winter. So if you want to catch that video when it lands, please do remember to subscribe. And let me know in the comments section below your experience on Octopus Flux. Is it working for you or have you wished that you'd stayed on one of Octopus NG's many other smart tariffs? Thanks for watching. See you next time.